Hey guys, welcome back to our State of Decay 2 New Player's Guide. Us uh, Brian here, and today we are um, venturing back in the world of trying to teach you guys uh, how to play this game a little bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it has uh, been a little bit for me. So today I have the idea, I want to go out, um, like I said, anytime I sign in, and this is something I advise you guys to do, sign in. Kind of look around the map, see what missions popped up. I I, I got uh, Chan here geared up for today's just, you know, our standard equipment. You know, I got her with our primary, secondary uh, snacks and um, some kind of healing item. And then I had some missions pop up. We got some people here that are actually asking uh, for us to provide them some backup. I was like, okay, yep, that's cool. They're down here. That's a whole nother eye enclave. We're going to have literally a long string of enclaves on this road. It's kind of crazy. So I do want to do that. And then we also have this mission here that popped up for the warlord to go uh, check out these people that have like extraordinary prices. Now, I'm actually going to kind of show you guys something that you can do with this mission because the difficulty is lower. And I showed you guys before you can kill the enclaves in one, the human enemies in one shot. It's not that bad to kind of take them on in a fight. Um, so that's something that we might look at here in a little bit, but first things first, I'm looking at my uh, resource numbers. Cause like I said, always take care of you first. And our food number is, uh, it's getting a little low. So I figured I got some, uh, areas around here that we can loot. Uh, like I showed you guys with the scouting option, if none of these buildings are revealed, hop up here and scout. But as I can see, as I run my curse over, um, I got a Jolly Collie Tavern here that I could potentially get food from. Uh, so we're going to check there. Over here, there's a spoon and cone. It's another food place. Uh, might can get food out of there. And then down here on the corner, there is a swine and bovine where I can get some more food. So that is three food rucks that I should be able to potentially get. And that will definitely hold us over very, very well. Ooh, end appendix. Yeah, I'm not going to spend money and get a pyro launcher. That's way too much. I never transferred this stuff into the base. All right, let's check our cars. So since we are going looting, I will take the van. Let's check our fuel. Good to go. <clears throat> and let's head out. All right. So we're going to head, like I said, we're going to head over... Check this Jolly Collie Tavern. Now, the one thing about the Jolly Collie Tavern, I learned this the hard way, guys, is you can get food from there. It is like a, you know, a tavern, a bar, or whatever. You can get food from there. You can also get your hands on tons of, um, like, ethanol. It's a great place to farm ethanol. All the bars and stuff, very, very good place to farm ethanol. But... If you go, if you're like, oh, well, you know, I'm gonna get the food out of here and make it to a food outpost. This building actually does not count as a food outpost, uh, so be careful with that. I uh, my first series on YouTube, I made home. that mistake, with a play card around, that won't last. thinking that it was gonna give me food, and uh, yeah, it went quite a while before I finally realized it didn't. So we have a close combat specialist here. I can hear zombies inside. So she's going to ambush if I get close. Now, generally, the ambush zombies are the ones that lay on their backs. So if you come in and there's a zombie laying on their back, that is an ambush zombie. So that's one that's going to stand up very, very fast and come at you. Now, the ones that lay on their stomach, they will still get up. But They will not long lunge at you as fast, so uh, keep that in mind. All right, so we're actually going to probably grab the ethanol out of here too. Boring. Um, nice. We got our wit skill. So we already went with close combat. We might actually go. Ooh, resourcefulness. Hmm. I kind of wanted to give her a ninja build, but resourcefulness is very very useful. Let me see. What was my potential? Yeah, her. She's one that I would definitely want to give resourcefulness to. 
So I think I'm going to give Shandy stealth. And Lily is the one that we're going to try to get resourcefulness. Now, um, this is something that I, you know, I guess I could teach you guys now is. Great. Feral. If he leaps on me, I'm fucked. Nice. The, um, the skills, like say you pick stealth and then later on down the road, you want to change it. Um, usually, you, you know, right now as a new player, you're probably like, man, you know, once I pick a skill, I pick a skill there. That is true. But they have a trader that shows up every once in a while and it's called the rare skills trader now anytime you see that trader and you this is more of a late game thing because the books are very very expensive but you can go to that trader and you can actually buy okay. retraining okay. manuals which allows you to um unlearn a advanced skill and it gives you the option to learn any of the advanced skills in in that um class like so for fighting for instance you can learn sword play um, striking, close combat, or endurance. Like, you get the option for all four of them. So, that is something, but that's more of something that you want to aim uh, late game. So, this Feral, we heard him. Now, what you can do is you can hunt him down and take care of him on your terms. Or you can just kind of just, you know, deal with him when you got to deal with him. So, he sounded like he was pretty close by, and I'm pretty sure if I drive over to the spoon and cone, which is going to be over here. He's going to probably run over there. So I can see the feral on the map here. I can mark him. And what that does is it reveals him on the map. So let's actually go take care of him on our own terms. And now that we have the stealth skill. It's not dead yet. As you guys can see, you can run while crouched. Um, you can move really, really fast while crouched. It's a very, very good skill. And it makes you harder to detect by zombies there. So there's a feral. Like I said, that marking, uh, I, thing is something that you guys can do. It's very, very useful. So like I said, the ferals, they're very, very predictable. They will always run at you in a straight line. Um... So as long as you get them lined up, you, you should be able to take them out, no problem. And now we can drive up over here. Now, the only thing is, you guys see these zombies mustering up? I know right now, you know, they're pretty spread out. They're going to be way easier to deal with when they're spread out. And if I drive over there, they're going to clump up and they're all going to chase me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of come over here and I'm going to try to take them out, like I said, on my own terms while they're nice and spread out. And now that we're stealth, we'll be able to sneak up and just take care of these guys pretty easily. And you know, one or two might still run up on us um, when we get over here, but it's still better than, you know, five or six. Okay. Let's go grab our van. Trying to get as many stealth kills as possible. It uh, it levels up that stealth skill faster. So, okay. So I can see that horde on the map moving closer, but it looks like it's a fairly small horde. From what I can see, it looks like it's only a couple zombies. Yeah, so we should be alright. We're going to pull right up here. Yeah, it's only the two zombies. We can deal with them. Beautiful. Now, if I coming into this plague territory, if I was being smart, um, what I should have done is brought my crossbow. Kind of 
I should I should have brought my crossbow. And what we could have done is we could have you know been farming resources, and we could have also been farming plague samples while we were at it. But that was a uh, a boo boo on my behalf. All right, so we're gonna check and see if we can get some more ethanol out of this place. Now stealth is also the skill. Um, when you max it out, it allows you to fast search without a search crash. Um, I have had a, a couple people already asking me, hey, why don't you fast search? And it's because I just don't want to create issues uh, when I don't have to. And beautiful. And we got one more build in the loot. Now the the thing is that I'm I'm actually uh, planning is once we get this area cleared out, we actually might move our food outpost from up here down into this town. As you guys, I said I could have. I could have just used my uh, got in the car, but these guys, there's a good chance that they would have ran up on the car, potentially. Uh, we got the we got the hood blocked with that car, but we could use the the skilling up. All right, so we see that screamer right there. He just ran into the road. I'm gonna deal with deal with him. Uh, you know what? Never mind. We should be oh, it is a moving horde, though. Yeah, we'll take care of them. So they're going to walk up where we're planning on going anyways. The zombies, I don't mind. The screamer. Yeah, we don't want, we don't want those problems. Maxed out cardio. Look at that. All right, so... um. Backpacking doesn't really go with her build that we got. Um, so for her, Marathon is going to be the best option. If I could have got Powerhouse, that would have been super sweet. But let's see if we can get some parts out of this trunk. I'll take what I can get. Marathon's not a bad skill. Like I said, it's a very... It, it allows you to really put the jets on and run. Um, when you're underweight, which I don't... Yeah, we're not underweight right now. But when you are underweight... Um, it doesn't cost stamina to run, like to sprint. Marathon is a very, very good skill. that we can't enjoy these quiet moments anymore. All right. So yeah, I do feel like putting pressure on these play cards. Uh, like I said, I want to get this town nice and cleared out. It's right on our front doorstep and having this many play cards on our front doorstep. It's nice if we want to like farm plague samples, but at the same time, we have to deal with blood plague on simple looting missions. And yeah, so, like I said, uh, we had an infestation that popped up. You guys know what I say about infestations. Take them out right away. Um, but the reason why I want to move this outpost is because we're not operating in this area as much. Now, I could leave it up there. You know what I mean? I could leave it there because we still have a lot of areas up there to loot. So, I'm considering it. And I might just do a second food outpost down here. Maybe that's a better idea. Somebody, uh... This place behind us. Somebody wants our help, and I couldn't see who it was. Uh, it might be these guys, so we're gonna actually gonna go take care of them before they get super super upset. And uh, I don't want to miss a chance to. Ooh, did we not get any food out of there? Looks like nobody else is home. But with a play card around, that won't last. Hmm, that stinks. 
Okay, let's get back to base, drop this stuff off, and then uh, we'll head over and meet that enclave. So we did get two things of food that should be enough to help hold us over a while. And uh, I wanted that third, but obviously, you know, beggars can't. Uh, we got <laughs> it just was empty, so there's nothing we could do about it. Now, uh, what we can do is we can check and see if this enclave that we're going to um, give back up, see what they have for sale. Maybe we can get some uh, food from them. And I'm also going to bring some of this stuff to sell to them also. Yeah, these two things we're going to sell to them. Now I'm going to go see if I have anything else. The long strip of uh, enclaves over there, so we might as well see if we have. So we got that level three. We're installing our water cooler in it now. All right, so we're gonna take the car. Like I told you, car's faster. It's better on fuel. Uh, let's grab our stuff out the trunk here. Certain vehicles for certain jobs. So the one thing I have noticed, though, on this difficulty, we have not run into any juggernauts yet. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys are at about the same, uh, I guess you could say, game stage that I'm at. And if you guys have seen any juggernauts, I have not. Maybe, uh, we'll, you know, one of them speak of the devil moments. Because I will teach you the easy way to deal with them. If you guys are familiar with my streams, you already know what I'm going to show you. But we'll save that surprise for when we actually run into one. I can't believe how these enclaves lined up on this road. Just literally in a, in a line. One right after the other. So I advise you guys, um, keep calling in enclaves. If you got the influence, um, the more trade partners you have, the better, you know. I'm here, hon. All right. Let's see what these go. Ooh. Buddy, buddy, but can I get some back? Up? Yeah, 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 we got you. All right, so she wants us to escort her to a garage. I want to see what they have for sale. Chemistry. Wow, she has some monster skills. Powerhouse, endurance, assault. Why is she so maxed out? He's nowhere near as good. She's a driver. Wow. Nice. That lady, though, she's she's pretty... She's not. It's not like they're the best skills. I mean, she has max powerhouse. That's that's definitely attractive. I couldn't sell to them, though. But it is what it is. So, let's see. Okay, yeah, they want to go to the garage right up here. That's really simple for us because we also have another enclave right over there. So, if we get into trouble, um, we have a, a bunch of other survivors that can help us. Barrel. Great. A barrel. If he leaps on me, I'm fucked. Okay, so we got the feral down. Stand out there, hon. Come on in. I'm actually gonna trade What's with going on, trade with this enclave since we're here. All right. See what else they have for sale. So they don't have any food or anything that we're interested in, so let's go loot this garage with her. So it's just a defense mission. 
She's gonna go and do her thing. We're just gonna pretty much keep her safe from zombies. Like I said, the cool thing is we got this enclave right here. We can do to make sure she doesn't get interrupted. We can actually just close the door. Wow, that's pretty pretty easy. Might be because that safe zone is right next to us. Hardest part about this whole thing was the feral that was here when we showed up. Alright, let's escort her back to her base. Simple, simple mission. You gotta like it when they're when they're easy like this, guys. You gotta take them when you can take your wins when you can get them, okay? Some easy influence. Easy allies. Is this where you're headed? Thanks. I appreciate it. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's right. later. Ah, good to see you. Yeah, so I could recruit these people if I wanted uh her if I wanted. We're gonna wait until we can maybe get them more maxed out. She's a survivor, I wouldn't mind uh a chemist you know we can use a chemist powerhouse super good max endurance assault eh, it is what it is but let's see what they have for sale now you gotta be careful make sure you don't threaten them i, I made that mistake it was it was terrible let's make a deal sure so they got some materials um let me check our area materials something we're interested in i feel like materials is something we're always interested in because we're on a lethal map So you know, yeah. Let's hey, let's, let's grab those. You got something for me? Might as well. We could use them. It's never a bad idea to buy materials, honestly. Um, so we already checked them. We'll check both of these guys. See if any of them have a bag of food that we can buy on our way back down. You know, always swing by your trade partners. See what they got before you you know resort to. Looting or calling in, uh, see what your trade partners have. I think every day or every, every, yeah, I think it's every full day cycle, um, your enclaves refresh, like, what they have for sale. Me? Of course. Okay, so they got some more materials too. Um, I'm not gonna. I don't think I'm gonna grab that bag of materials just because when we drop this off, we're gonna jump up to about 18 materials. Let's see what we need. Uh, and there's not much we need to do around the base. The only other thing I'm maybe even thinking about doing is upgrading our workshop to level three. But we still need some a mechanic, and we still need some scraps of circuitry. So. Down to business. All right. I might uh hold off on buying another bag of materials for now. The signal antenna is pretty attractive. Actually, you know what? We actually might buy it because I want to upgrade our command center to level two. Yeah. So let's upgrade that to level two. To see you. Hey there, business partner. We'll grab them. So um that's something I haven't talked to you guys about. The command center uh is very, very useful. Um this command center right here, when it's level one, you can't really do anything with it. This is what dictates how many outposts you can have. So when you max it out, it gives you access to, like right now, you start off with two. When I upgrade it right now to level two, it's going to be a third outpost. When I upgrade it to level three, it'll give you a fourth outpost. Now, uh, this actually it works hand in hand with um, this signal antenna right here. You install this in your command center. 
and as you guys can read, it, installing this mod in a level two or higher, it gives you an extra outpost. So this will give you, because right now with, without an antenna, you can only get four outposts. You install the antenna, you can get a fifth one. And then there is a better antenna that you can actually trade for. It's called the network signal antenna. You can only get it from network traders. And um, that will give you two more extra outposts. So you can end up with six available outposts. Um, and then you can actually recruit a red talon that has the hacking skill and that will give you an additional so right now in the base game you can get up to seven outposts uh but yeah for the extra three two of them you need to get your hands on the antenna and then the other one you need a red talon with the hacking skill and we got a zombie siege that's gonna pop off which is fine i do want to go deal with that infestation hey, you got something for me Okay. okay, so no, none of our trade partners up here have food. Uh, none of them have a mechanic skill book, which is something we're also looking into. Uh, I don't know what we can get out of this place next door. Is this like an office? Let's see if we can actually get a skill book out of here. So now that we have uh, somebody with the stealth skill, um, if you guys didn't read the tooltip, it allows you to silently open locked doors while crouched. So um, usually when you come up to these doors like this, it's locked. Somebody asks, how do I get out of the door animation? I just dodge and she'll let go. Um, but now that that door's locked, you can, and your person will like lock pick it and you're able to come right in. Just keeping an eye on that zombie threat. We want to make sure we don't miss that. Oh, this might be useful. Oh, chemistry. We got a chemistry book. That's really, really good now. No. The only problem, though, is it makes that uh, lady that we were talking about recruiting a little less valuable because now I can just train somebody to be a Again. chemist. Nothing more to find here. Let's go. In a gardening book. I'm going to sell uh, some of this stuff to them. So, I'm going to sell the gardening book. I'm going to sell that. Sell the seeds. I'm going to keep that and that. And I'm going to sell this. All right. Let's head home. We'll defend the siege. Um, and then we'll literally drive right across the field. And we're going to take out this infestation. I think this may be a barn. Um, and we'll check and see if that maybe has some food in it too while we're, since we're going to be over there. Yeah, because one more bag, two more bags of food would be ideal. That'd really polish up our numbers, but, uh, one more bag should put us in a really good spot. We won't have to worry about food for quite a few days. Probably a good week or so in game. And if we get that second food outpost, um, we'll be sitting in a really, really good spot. Get the stuff in the base. And now, um, we want to make sure that our medic, like, like I told you, you want to make sure that you're constantly working on leveling the skill. We really got to pick her skills, and I'll do that uh, eventually, but we got to make sure we're constantly upgrading that skill. So, we'll go back to our infirmary here, and we're going to produce some more meds. We got a horde at the back door. So that's actually quite a bit of zombies right here. Ooh. Okay. And I'm going to knock them all down. Should be able to get two or three. Well 
I'm gonna kill all the plague ones as fast as I can. Zombie bowling. Okay, so let's catch our breath. Now, I didn't have to do that. Um, what I could have done is I could have just went into the base and actually involved my <laughs> survivors in the fight. But we pretty much just soloed that siege. Yeah, so in that case, like when them zombies were banging on the door, um, we could have just let them come in and our all of our survivors would kind of converged over here and started shooting them up. All right, so we did get a plague sample though. That was kind of cool. All right, we took a little, a little nick, a tiny little bit of plague damage. Nothing serious. Um, let's re up on our snacks. As you guys see, when you're in a big horde fight, you you can burn through snacks really, really quickly. All right, so we'll go firecrackers and fire, and let me top off my. Oh, we're good on the bullets. So we're literally going to just head right across the way here. Deal with this infestation. So I am going to... Uh, here shortly, we're going to start working on our bounty to start shooting a bunch of zombies. Uh, now that we have all that ammo stocked up and we have our ammo press installed... Okay, so there's going to be a, quite a few zombies here. Deal with these guys outside first. So we should be able to just burn up all them dudes. Screamer came out. We can take care of him. And now we can melee the rest of these guys easily. So a cool thing about close combat too that's not in the tooltip is um, you guys see me dodging behind the zombies a lot. Grabbing them, throwing them to the ground, and then walking up and killing them. But a cool thing that you can do at close combat is generally when zombies are standing in front of you, right, and you hit the kick button, you'll just kick them like this. Um, now, when you unlock close combat, um, obviously, you guys know, we got the shove where we can push them on the ground from the front, walk up and execute them. But the cool thing about close combat is um, from behind, if you get behind a zombie and you kick, you'll kick their legs out like that, and it allows you to... Um, execute them also so you have an execute from the front where you can push them down on the ground execute them like that or if you happen to come up behind the zombie you can kick their legs out and execute them like that this car have uh, potential loot it does All right. Yep, that's that barn may have some food. Okay, we should be good. Yeah, so close combat, it shines when the zombies are on the ground. That's like when close combat is at its, like, strongest. Even for your normal swing attack, when the zombies are on the ground, you swing about ten times faster than if they're standing up. So close combat shines when the zombies are on the ground. So that's your goal is to try to get the zombies on the ground. Come on, please give me the food at least. Nope. 
Uh, lethal map likes to make you regret decisions. But it is nothing that we can't handle, as you guys see. Our, our, our numbers are, are phenomenal. We're good. We're definitely good. They could be better, obviously, but it is what it is. So missions, let's see. We're not getting a pyro launcher right now. Um, so that mission will pop up. You'll see it. It says, you know, get your hands on a pyro launcher. How you can do that, if you do want to get your hands on one, is the Independence Day pack. And you call in the Independence Day trader. Now, the calling in the trader is free. But the pyro launcher itself is about 250 influence. And then you have to get the ammo and everything for it. Now, the ammo is you have to craft it. And the only way to craft it is you have to actually get the uh, fireworks crafting station. And I believe the only way to get that is by uh, this Independence Day supply drop. Unless you can buy it from the trader, but I don't re recall if you could buy it from the trader or not. Oh, Juggernaut! Science! So I'm going to lure this feral away really quick. Just so I can teach you guys about Juggernauts. Like I said, you get that nice distance with the feral. He'll just run straight at you. You just take care of him. He's maxed out shooting. Yo, we're maxing out all her skills. All right, so we're going to go with sharp shooting, which gives her bullet penetration. Which means if I line up zombies and you shoot, take out multiple zombies at one shot with low caliber weapons. Now, high caliber weapons like 5.56762, they will do that naturally. But the... Uh... So where's the juggernaut? Okay, so he's wandering his butt back down there. So I want to take care of these little guys really quick. We need to shoot some zombies anyway, so. As you can see, we're also... Um, I don't know why that plague zombie didn't count. We were crouched. Oh, we need to be using pistols. What am I doing? I'm over here just... I'm thinking since I have 9mm that it, it's... All, but, but, no, we... All those kills were for nothing. Okay, so juggernauts. Oh, Beautiful. Fabulous. Now, you got to be really, really careful with this. Now, as you guys see, it looked like my car was actually smoking. So, it might have been over here shooting at it. But I think it's actually just the ambient smoke. So, juggernauts. When you first run into one, they're, they're pretty scary. Especially as a new player. Um, and without 50 cals and grenades and stuff like that they're, they're decently hard to deal with so the the thing is is you can use your car your car is such a good weapon against juggernauts it's crazy now you got to be really careful when doing this guys because if that juggernaut hits the front of your car it's done it's going to instantly light up like a candle and that's it so what you want to do is you want to make sure you're driving away from the juggernaut and you want to hit them dead square with the back of the car okay when he's charging at you, just line him up. Hit him with the back of the car. Pull forward. Back up. Back of the car. And then just keep repeating this. Make sure you got a decent amount of runway. And just keep hitting him with the back of the car. Now, it might not seem like I'm doing anything. But I am. And... Hitting them with the back of your car. As long as you keep hitting them square. Boom. Eventually he'll die. And your car doesn't take any damage. So, I mean, the back will get dented up. But your car won't take any engine damage. But you got to be careful. Because even if he hits the side of your car. Um, it, it will blow all your doors off. And super damage your car. So, you got to make sure you're only hitting him with the back. And that's how you can deal with juggernauts uh, when you're in a car and you don't have any other means to deal with the juggernauts. Okay, so let's see. The bounty broker wants us to go over there. I do have one bounty that I can turn in to get that model, model 92. She's getting tired, though. So we're going to get her on bed rest. And I think we're going to get Lily prepped up to do some play carding.
Okay, so this is something that we haven't touched on yet. Now that we're in our big base, um, this is where I can start teaching you guys about leaders because at this point, we don't have a leader. And you're probably going to have some of your survivors like, oh, we need a leader just as my, my person did. You'll have this thing saying that you need to promote a leader. Now, what happens is in order to qualify to even have a leader, you have to have people that are heroes. Um, now, hero is the max level of your survivors. Like right now, she's only a citizen because she hasn't been here that long. The more stuff you do with your survivors, like kill play cards, kill freaks, um, loot resources and stuff like that will slowly build up their status with your community and eventually they will gain hero status. Now, um, I, as you guys can see, I have three heroes right now. Now, this is where you have to decide what kind of leader do I want in my base? Now, I can look. Uh, she is going to be a sheriff. If you look all the way down at the top, it says leadership. So if I make her the leader, she will be a sheriff leader. She's going to be a trader leader. She's going to be a warlord leader. And she is also going to be a trader leader. Now, as a new player, it all depends on what your your goals are um like what do you want to achieve in the game now i'm going to give you my uh what i would tell you guys to do and then at that point like i said that's not law that is just you get to choose after that what you want to do now when it comes to leaders each leader has their own um special building which i can't show you right now because i don't have any empty slots but every single leader has a special building that they can build and that's the main reason why you're gonna build a um a specific leader is to gain that building type or to gain the legacy when you finish the game every single leader in the game like say you finish with a trader when you go to start a new game because you finished with a trader you'll unlock what's called a boon and that boon allows you to start your next game with benefits and the trader boon for instance gives you it allows you to start the game with 4,000 influence and you get this um legacy trader that shows up to your base right off the bat like as soon as you start the game you claim your starter base a trader will show up and says hey you know do you guys want to buy something thank you for helping us out in the past blah 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 and you can trade with them they have good guns they have all types of good resources for you to start the game with that you can spend some of that influence on now the two that i would tell you to play your game with off the bat would be either a trader or a builder now i don't have a builder right now so i can't show you guys a warlord is very good at um like crafting ammo they're building crafts ammo um all the ammo types in the game game you can craft with a lord warlord armory a sheriff gives you a field hospital which i still to this day think is pretty pointless um it does count as a level three infirmary so if you want to somehow you need small slots and you want to swap out a level three infirmary for a field hospital that is a possibility um the builder gives you a sniper tower, which gives you 50 cal sniper support. It's super duper good. And the trader gives you what is called the trade depot, which allows you to call all different types of traders to come to your base to do trades. Now, that is the one that we're going to focus on in this playthrough because as new players on a lethal map, you guys are probably having issues with resources. And getting a trader leader is a way to... Um, take care of that so we're gonna make lily here our leader boom and that's all it is guys you literally go to that center icon um right here the skeagle uh you click on it it'll bring up the the message for you to pick who you want and uh we're gonna pick lily she is going to be our new trader leader all right now lily seeing that she's our leader she's also about to go on uh play card duty So she she lead, she likes to lead from the front. So Lily's alpha ear is pretty dope. I think I'm actually going to give her a hat though. I haven't really changed many of my character's clothing. That's another thing that we could probably touch on. So we're going to gear up for a play card. Sun's about to come up. Um I purposely wanted to wait till sun uh it was a little light outside to do play cards. I don't think we've done one during the daytime yet this entire playthrough. All right, so we're gonna load up on that. We're gonna grab this gun. So as you guys can see, we got our guns. Now this gun's getting a little banged up. 
Now, what I guys advise you guys to do is fix your guns a little at a time. Don't wait till it's fully maxed out and you got to dump 300 parts into it to fix it. Right now it's 27. Hey, you know what? Let's drop a couple parts into it. Get it fixed up. Drop a couple parts into that. Boom. Our guns are in tip-top shape. We don't have to worry about it. Our melee weapon is decent. It's only got a... Now, this is a heavy sword. It's eight pounds. I'm actually going to swap that sword out with something a little lighter. Maybe this machete. It's only two pounds. I want to stay light. You know what I mean? You want to stay light on your feet. Oh, actually, we're going to take out a play cart, so uh, all that's irrelevant. We're going to grab our sledgehammer. As you guys know, plague harding, sledgehammers, it's the way to go. So what we're going to do here is we're going to grab um, our energy drinks. We Actually, we'll grab our stims. Stims are the best stims in the game. Um, the stimulants, these are the best stamina item in the game. This will definitely, because I want to take out at least two of these play cards. I want to get all three. We'll start with these two down here. And if we can do it, we'll, we'll push this third one. So let's see all what we have for resources to take out this play card. We did get some dynamite. Um, we can take it out with that. Let's uh, grab our healing items. Strong. Pay. So we have the best consumables right here for healing and stamina. All right. We're going to grab. We'll grab some explosives. That we'll, we'll do one of them with this bloater cloud grenade. And as you guys know, for the bloater cloud grenade, if you don't have the flares, you can use firecrackers. So we're going to grab... A stack of firecrackers, just in case. We'll grab two firecrackers to set these grenades off. And well, actually, we only need one. We're going to grab uh, fire to deal with any hordes that might show up. Dynamite to blow up another play cart. And then for the last play cart, we'll go with a frag and a pipe bomb. And of course, we're going to bring, bring a plague cure with us. So this is a pretty decent setup. I want to leave that open slot so I can unequip and equip my heavy weapon in between. Okay, so it's just a... Uh, I want to leave that slot open so I can switch between close combat and uh, my heavy weapon. So, first things first. This one is what? In a warehouse. Okay. Now, before I leave, we know that we want to do some plague sample farming while we're there. So, we're, I know we're not taking out all the play cards at, all at once. You know what I mean? So, for the third play card's supplies, I'll leave that in the car for now. But this is play card one. This is play card two. This is play card three. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a crossbow and the bolts. As I told you guys, it's always good to multitask. We're going to farm samples while killing play cards at the same time. If I take out the nearest play cart, this should clear up. Okay, so we're going to come down here. Looks like there might be a feral over there. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to just wait to see what shows up. I see a screamer over there. Oh, okay, so that is big. That is a lot of zombies. We're going to take care of this guy. Might be able to take care of these guys as they bunch up. Okay, so they're pretty bunched up here. I actually am just going to throw fire. fire in the hole! Now, that would have been a good, you know, we could have farmed them with the crossbow, but there was a lot of them, and you don't want to take, we don't want to take too many risks. We'll take care of this screamer. We're just going to sneak him. Now, we only got one sample from that. Uh, if we would have used the crossbow because she's a pathologist, we probably would have got uh, quite a few more. Quite a few more. But that was a really, really big horde. 
Okay, so once again, we're going to clear the perimeter. Cardio maxed out. Nice. Powerhouse. Yes! Um, that's super lucky. So Powerhouse is one of the best melee or the cardio skills in the game to me personally I, I love it when you max it out it allows you to front grab um it unlocks the drop kick for ferals which we'll go over um and it it, it allows you to use heavy weapons efficiently um it, it's it's such a good skill guys it, it's gonna take us a while for us to go over this but yes it gives you the ability to, to do the drop kick um which when you do it on a feral, it'll instantly put them in a stun state, and you can just execute them. So you'll dodge the feral once, and then you'll drop kick him, and he'll be down for the count. You just execute him, and that's it. There's a bloater nearby. So we're gonna clear out these two. That was a good shot. You seen that? But we got that bloater right there. I should probably kill him so we don't hit him at another point. But I don't want to make all the noise. Okay, so it seems like we did a pretty decent job clearing out the immediate vicinity. Let's step inside the building. Oh, we got some in the road over there, but we're moving that way. Step inside and see what we... So there's a bloater in there. Take him out. Oh, there. Oh, sweet. That other sway came out of nowhere. I did push in pretty aggressive, though. Okay, so the inside of the building is cleared. We're going to do a quick peek outside, make sure there's no hordes that decided to just roam in. Looking good. All right, let's do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap. Uh, actually, no, we'll keep the... Uh, we got our sidearm on us, so we're going to keep the crossbow on us for now. Just to farm any zombies that happen to show up. Alright, so now that we have powerhouse. If you unlock the powerhouse skill at any point. Don't just swing the, the weapon normally. What you can do now is you can do a... It's like a charge attack. You hold the attack button and then you'll do mega damage. As you guys can see, two of those charge hits was enough to phase the play cart. We're going to come out here and make space. Make sure nobody's coming behind us. Don't tunnel in. Uh, zombies will sneak up on you. Good shot. Okay, constantly reloading. Constantly reloading. So we got what, about five in the back. Wow, those some good shooting there, Tex. Oh, man. We're on another level. So we got this sway coming around. So we're just going to keep an eye on our a number of bolts we have. As soon as we get low enough on bolts, um, we're going to swap to our rifle because I don't want to waste or you don't want to run out of bolts and then, you know, get caught with your pants down. All right. So let's swap back to our heavy weapon. Once again, do our charged swings. There's only one swing. 
Don't equip it. Last magazine. Better make these shots count. Shots count. Okay, so we're down to four shots. We got an extra shot right here. Last magazine. Better make these shots count. Last magazine. Better I said you always want to try to fight these guys outside where it's nice and spread out. So we're out of bolts right now, so I'm going to swap over to just melee combat for now. I'm going to switch to my sidearm just in case shit gets really nasty. But it's only two of them, so we should be able to just take care of these guys. I'm going to come to the car. I'm going to swap out to this. Okay, so now there's about four of them, so we got to be careful. I got stamina items just in case. I can't keep this up. Go stamina back. Okay, so then now there still might be some more inside, and there definitely is. I can see them. Now, at this point, like I said, what you can do is you can obviously sit here and you can keep fighting, but another option you do have is you can Zerg the Plague Heart because when you kill the Plague Heart, it will kill all of the Plague Zombies in the immediate area on this difficulty slider. Um, now, there's about five of them or so. And she is also proficient with heavy weapons. So I could pop a stem and go in there and just start swinging around the heavy weapon and kill them all. But we're just going to keep our close combat weapon out right now. I should be able to deal with these last couple. Okay, so we're mega low on stem. Let's get our stem back. I might actually pop this stem. Let's see. I said, I, I stimulants are super hard to get your hands on. I need to rest. And if I don't have to use them, I won't. But it's also not something worth, you know, dying over. We eventually cleared them out, though, so we're good. Nope. They're just spawning in, aren't they? All right, now we're good. Jesus. All right, so this will be the last couple hits, and this play cart will be done. One hit. Yep. So we could have zerged the heart, and we could have just took care of it, but... All right, so what we're going to do is we'll grab the rucksack and the stamina items and fire. Anything? No, no, no. Uh, we'll drop the fire in the car.
Oh, well, actually, no, we can't. We'll drop the rucksack in the car. So now we have a little bit too much equipment on us. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go... Uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be smart about this. Episode's been going on for a while. We'll go put this stuff at, back at home. Um... I'm not swapping characters or anything. I'm not re under. I'm just gonna end the episode and we'll literally pick up with this siege next episode. Ooh, that was a bloater. So close to hitting it. I don't know how we didn't set him off. All right. So all the stuff that we don't need now, we don't need this on us. Don't need that. We can drop the plague samples and we can drop these extra. Um, Actually, you know what? Let's let's keep the extra stamina items on us just because we can use those instead of the stims cuz I'm less I'm more reluctant to use the stims. I'd rather use the energy drinks. I'll actually use them. Um that doesn't ha be ha how you guys have played the game. That's just how I am personally. Use what you want to use. But if you do have energy drinks, they don't last as long and they're not as potent as the stims are. The stims will really carry. They're they're so overpowered. They're 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 awesome, but um, yeah, like I said, next episode we're literally gonna pick up right after this. I just don't want this episode to go on forever, and we are gonna take out those uh, other two play cards and try to establish an outpost in this city. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that it was helpful, and yeah, guys, uh. If you aren't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps. If you, have, uh, if you haven't hit that thumbs up yet and you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. That also really, really helps. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.